guarantee <laughs> that a Bulldog will get their first win of the season tonight, Tyler. <laughs> Let's take a look at our Cricket Wireless Impact Players of the Game here today. We'll start with Cooper Wallace of the Citadel, the leading rusher from a year ago, and the leading rusher coming into this game. 33 carries just shy of 200 yards from Florence, South Carolina. And how about Aaron Smith? First team all MEAC selection, 15 tackles so far on the year. Had a great week last uh, the other week against Georgia Tech. Where well, Aaron is a, a, a great player from Manning, South Carolina. He's all MEAC. He's a great player that coaches love him, and he's the dog that you want to have on your defensive side of the ball. And it is the final home opener for Coach Buddy Pugh in his final season, 20 sec 22nd season, the all-time winning as coach at South Carolina State. You take a look at the numbers there, 146 and 90. And look at that MEAC record, 112 and 42. A 1975 alum of this very school. A lot of pride for Oliver Buddy Pugh. I don't know if anybody loves South Carolina State more than Buddy Pugh. In these past 20-something years, he's gave everything, I think, to this university. There will be a lot of talk about Coach Buddy Pugh throughout the broadcast, but the game at hand is Citadel in South Carolina State. As you take a look at another connection there, Coach Maurice Drayton, who was here in Orangeburg for a couple of years, as you see there, joined the staff in 2008. Coach South Carolina State, the two MEAC titles, and how about that? You look at the numbers of what he did when he was coaching the defense in a 2009 HBCU National Championship. Well, I'm proud to say that I was also here on that staff that also at where Mo Drayton was here. And great coach. He's been in the NFL. He's been around a lot. He's a Citadel alum, like you said earlier. He's been on the Citadel, Citadel staff before, and he's coming back home to his alumni to be the head coach. And kind of interesting, you look at Coach Pugh coming back home to South Carolina State, spent 22 seasons. Maybe the same could be said 20 years from now. Maybe could have similar success for Coach Maurice Drayton. That will be great for him. I know that's probably his goal to be, to be able to go back to the Citadel and, and do a great job. So, of course, the Citadel huddled up as we're getting ready to kick things off between the Bulldogs and the Bulldogs. So I will do my best to clarify. If it was on radio, it would be a bigger problem. <laughs> but you can see the colors and uh, who's wearing what. As South Carolina State, of course, has uh, got the home color Citadel in the road whites as you take another look at Coach Buddy Pugh. We're ready for kickoff here between South Carolina State and the Citadel. Well, Coach, let's break this down. Looking for your first win right before kickoff. Uh, South Carolina State obviously has struggled on offense, as has the Citadel, but South Carolina State has played a lot tougher competition. They played Georgia Tech, they played UNC Charlotte, played a really good Jackson State team to kick off the year. We know there's talent on this team, they just haven't shown it yet. Well, you start off in a lot of the FCS team play these bigger schools for money games. Uh, a lot of times you're outmatched, you know, so South Carolina State feels like they still might be the better 0-3 team if that's such a thing that's possible. With the competition they've played, where they've been, and the senior, you know, some of the seniors they've been a part of, they feel like they have an advantage tonight. Citadel also 0-3. They will get the football to start things off. They've been outscored 138-10. to and, you know, Coach Murray Strayton, very honest in his press conferences, saying he knows the task at hand. He knows it's going to be a far climb up the hill to get the Citadel program turned back around. And here's the opening kick and the return. We're underway here in Orangeburg as he gets it up to the 26-yard line. And that's where Citadel will put it in play. So we should see... Dustin Fletcher at quarterback, although we may want to hold off here. Yep, it will be Dustin Fletcher. The transfer out of Flint, Michigan. Thrown for over 200 yards so far through three games. Didn't play a whole lot in the first game. 6'3", 220-pound sophomore. They really like this young man. Grayson Underwood, you'll also see at the quarterback position. Out of Irmo, they're kind of running a two-quarterback system, seeing you know, what goes best with their offense, what they can figure out, but Dustin Fletcher will get the start for Citadel. Well, a lot of times they say if you have two quarterbacks, Tyler, you don't have one. So I think a lot of times in a situation, you know, you're trying to get out and see who can get some momentum going early or who can get the team behind them early in the game. So we're about to get things started here. First and 10 for the Bulldogs at their own 26-yard line. As you see the records there, Citadel and South Carolina State both 0-3. Someone will get a win here on the MEAC Digital Network. Dustin Fletcher waits for the snap. Puts a man in motion, and of course, Citadel with that option. A handoff straight ahead, and down he goes for a short game there for South Carolina State. 
And you can see what a considerable mindset is for tonight. They want to be able to see who can be the most ag aggressive in the trenches earlier. And they want to run the football downhill quick, fast, and see if they can get some momentum going. Three-yard gain on first down. If you're on the road, that's a win. See one of our cricket impact players, Cooper Wallace, helmet came off, so he's got to go to the sideline. Brings up a second down and seven yards to go. And you know, and that's what this Citadel team tries to do. Three yards in a cloud of dust, right? Well, shorten the game, you know, give your offense a chance to, to get on the field and give your defense a chance to get a break. Out of that option, Fletcher clapping his hands. He's ready to go. And they blow the play dead with a whistle. Flag down. All start on the Citadel. You know, when Coach Brady Straight in his press conferences, trying to stress discipline. And, you know, a new coach, turnover on the staff. You know, there's a lot of new coaches we'll talk about with the Citadel. We were talking to some of them before the game. You're going to have that because it's kind of that chemistry, right, that rhythm trying to get everybody on the same page. Having stability, having chemistry, all that stuff comes into play. So early in seasons, early in, in careers like this, you know, you have some ups and downs. Johnny Crawford the third is your running back right beside Fletcher. He's, no, it's going to be a keeper for Fletcher in some room at the 30. And knocked out of bounds there at the 35-yard line. And a great keeper and a run for Dustin Fletcher, the quarterback. Yeah, you'll see if on the quarterback read there, he reads little midline there option, and he pulls it, uh, gets a little uh, run there, a little block out there will help him a little bit there. But great job, you know, on a second and long play. Now you're in third and short. Great right behind shot there on the cricket replay by our camera crew. Did you take a look at Fletcher and Johnny Crawford? And Crawford has played very well the last two games for the Citadel, expecting big things from him, spelling Cooper Wallace at running back. Puts a man in motion. Going to hand it off to Crawford. He's hitting the backfield. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what a hit. That was Patrick Godbolt. Nice to meet you. How are you? <laughs> getting acquainted on third and short makes it fourth down and four. Well, if there's such thing as a missed assignment, I think we had a missed assignment there because Patrick Godbo came scot-free there and was able to make a big tackle for a loss there. Citadel so might be a little lucky that ball didn't come free there a little earlier. Coach, that was a high cross body in WWE. Woof. Out to punt is going to be James Plate. Boots this one. Taken at the 25, still on his feet, breaks a tackle, coming near side at the 30, 35, and out of bounds there, and that's a great return. I believe that was Richard Bailey. Do we have a flag down? Yeah, this could be a big call here. I think it's going to be running into the kicker. I don't know if it's roughing, but actually there was some contact on the kicker here, but five yards might be a first down. If it's a personal foul, roughing the kicker, then it's automatic first down. Mm. Oh, wow. So that is a huge call, as you call, called it, partner. I saw it, but I wasn't sure if the officials also saw it because it was a late uh, penalty thrown in after the return. And they caught the running into the kicker. So a new set of downs for the Citadel, breathing new life into this offense. They get another crack at it. And we talked about getting momentum, you know, uh, Coach P probably preached all week defense. Get out and get a stop early. Get an offense a chance to get on the field. You get a stop, and then you get a big penalty on fourth down. So here is Fletcher on the option. Nowhere to pitch it to, and he's going to be drug down. Oh, and there's one of our cricket impact players, Aaron Smith. Bringing him down to the backfield for a loss. Well, I think we picked the right players for the impact players because <laughs> we've only had about three or four plays, and our impact players are making impact. So, uh, great play there by uh, Aaron Smith. Aaron Smith, such a dynamic player at linebacker. You, know, you look at his size, he can go edge rusher, he can drop back in coverage. Kind of reminds you of B.J. Davis a little bit, who played a couple years here at South Carolina State, transferred to East Carolina last year. So here is Fletcher once again, going to hand it off to Cooper Wallace, and he gets hit hard. It is a positive game, though, far side of the field. On a second and 13, makes it third down and long. We'll call it third and 11. So clock will run at 11.29. You know, partner, we've only had a couple of minutes 
run out here, but it's been a lot of action. <laughs> a lot of action. That's what we come here for, Tyler. We come for some action. So uh, <laughs> n neither of the Bulldogs are disappointed so far. Three receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Look at this. Citadel going five wide. Three down linemen, but they're showing an edge rusher. Fletcher, back to pass, going to be a little screen pattern, and he's brought down immediately. South Carolina State not fooled at all on that one. Great play now. You see uh, Citadel in an empty formation. Now, there's probably some alum from Citadel that played 15, 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> had no idea what formation that was just now. So you can see some of the new things that uh, Coach Drayton is bringing to the table, but it's going to take a little time. So the Citadel will kick it away here. A lot of substitutions here. That was a bit of a mess on special teams as you had about four players running off the field, and I think the officials may call either a delay a game or it's going to be something on South Carolina State, I believe. The White Hat given the directions here. We talked about it, both these teams 0-3 coming in. Maurice Strayton in his first year with the Citadel. He's a 1998 alum. Just like Buddy Pugh is a 1975 alum of South Carolina State, trying to bring prominence back to their respective programs as you take a look at Coach Drayton. <laughs> Waiting for the call here. Oh, so a false start on the single. Well, South Carolina State very fortunate there. Yeah. Well, you have to give uh, the defense a chance to substitute. Anytime the offense substitute, uh, the, the white hat or somebody or the umpire should go stand over the football and give the defense the same amount of time to substitute also. Mm -hmm. Could have been too many men on the field for South Carolina State, but fortunate it was a false start by the Citadel. And we still are kind of at a stalemate here waiting for the teams to line up on a fourth and 15. Very good crowd on hand. Citadel, of course, one of the most proud fan bases in the state. Seems like everywhere you go, there's going to be a Citadel alum somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and in South Carolina State, we already know their history. We know the Garnet is always going to travel mm -hmm. out of there. And Orangeburg is definitely a great destination. This is a great crowd today for the home opener for South Carolina State. So here's Platt to boom it away, and that is a great kick. My goodness, goes all the way back to the 11, picked up by Bailey and forced out of bounds there. So we'll see South Carolina State with the football for the first time. Back in a bit on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus.
Back at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium in Orangeburg, South Carolina, as you take a look at the series history between these two teams, hard to believe it's only the fourth meeting, Coach. First meeting was in 99, last meeting, 2001. So before Buddy Pugh got here, Citadel won all three meetings, and we'll talk about the connections. A couple of guys on this Citadel staff that were here at South Carolina State. We'll talk about that throughout the broadcast. Keith Jones and Danny Lewis, who we talked to before this game got started down on the field. So, South Carolina State will start with the football. Their first offensive possession at 10-15 remaining in this first quarter. And not much doing there on the first play. Starting things out at quarterback will be Corey Fields, the graduate out of Hollywood, South Carolina. 5,500 yards in his career for South Carolina State. 48 touchdowns. He was here back in 2019 in the last home opener that was played in the month of September. Corey out of the shotgun. Going to be a second down and nine off the short one-yard gain. And here's a little flip pass to the back and a nice gain on second down. That was Jawarn Howe. And boy, they really like this young man out of Mooresville, North Carolina. Talking to the radio voice of South Carolina State, Ernest Robinson. They really like his potential, what he can do. As you see Howe get free in space. Yeah, and that's 6'1", 215 pounds, that's a load going down that sideline. So mm -hmm. a great play of getting him in space and seeing what he can do with the football. New set of downs for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Play action fake, Fields looking, going to throw this over the middle, and that is caught by the receiver. Looks to be good enough for a first down far side. That is Richard Bailey, his high school teammate out of Hollywood, another graduate student for the Bulldogs, 5'10", 180 pounds. Well, you can see South Carolina State is getting out, getting the ball out, a little play-action pass. Teammate, uh, Baptist Hill connection. These guys have been playing <laughs> together for a long time, so you can see the chemistry there. Yeah, shout-out Baptist Hill, just 30 minutes away from the campus of the Citadel. Corey Fields talked about with the Charleston Post and Courier I saw this week with the local media that he played in the Sertoma Classic down at Johnson Haygood Stadium where Citadel plays. And here's the handoff far side. I think that's Howell once again for a positive gain as the sun starts to poke out from the clouds on this Saturday afternoon in Orangeburg. Well, South Carolina State hoping that sun is bringing a uh, line of hope there. You know, they're getting some <laughs> offense going, uh, getting some first downs, which is key. Anytime you get on um, your first game home, you got the nerves, you got the jitters, you know, any first down or any positive play is good. Second down and eight. A great shot there, that sun peeking through the clouds. Well done. About to be under eight to play here in the first quarter. South Carolina State on the move. They got it up close to midfield. I think that's Howell again, gets it to the 50. I'll tell you, Jawarn Howell has taken the load here in this first drive. He's caught it a couple of times, carried it. Good looking back, as you said, Demetrius Davis. Well, one thing I know about Buddy Pugh now, Buddy Pugh, with his back's against the wall, he loves to run the football. <laughs> and he feels like he can control the game with running the football. So being 0 3, having an off week, I guarantee you they've done a great job of practicing running the football and getting downhill. So third down and three yards to go. Ball at midfield. Going to be a swing out pass. That's Howell again. And it looks like he just got the first down inside Citadel territory at the 45. Seems like Coach uh, McWirt must have seen in his field study that he can get the back out the backfield. That's something they came to twice in, you know, the first six, seven plays. So coming in the game, you see something they think they can get. So South Carolina State with a new set of downs, first and 10. Ball at the 45. That was Thomas Wyatt, the linebacker, on the stop for the Citadel. And one thing the Citadel would like to change, they do not want their defensive backs to be their leading tacklers. Here is Corey Fields, and a nice run for him out of the option. We don't see that often from Corey, but he got it inside the 35 there with a nice first down run for South Carolina State. Yeah, you can see a little quarterback read zone where he had a lead blocker there. Uh, South Carolina State's going to the playbook. You know, a little split zone action, a little load action with uh, tight end leading. You know, they talked about this Keyshawn Tony kid, and they're really impressed with his mm. blocking skills. Yeah. And you can see him there on that graphic. We're going to talk about Keyshawn Tony, a graduate 6'4", 230 out of Williston, South Carolina. Coaches were gleaming about him. 
Pump fake. Corey Fields going to bomb this one deep down the near side. Oh, what a catch, and that's a touchdown. South Carolina State. What a grab. Justin Smith-Brown, his first game back off injury. Oh, my, what a catch. Great play. Way to get the game started. Way to get the crowd in the game. If you're the home team, this is what the doctor ordered. You, this is the recipe for being able to come out and get your home crowd behind you. <laughs> Justin Smith Brown out of Coco, Florida. Boy, I tell you, you know who that looked like? That looked like a guy who just left here. That's Shaq Davis. That's who exactly that looked like. What a grab. Justin Smith Brown making his presence felt on the first drive for South Carolina State with a huge score. That's a 39-yard touchdown pass. So here's Zimmerman, spot, kick, and that is good. South Carolina State, they strike first blood. It is 7-0. Bulldogs on top of Citadel on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Seven to nothing, South Carolina State strikes first over the Citadel here in Orangeburg at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. As you take a look at the crowd, and let's look at this replay here, the Cricket Wireless replay. A camera crew found something. Let's see if he got that put in. One, secure. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. You know, if I'm a South Carolina State fan. It's a touchdown. If it's Citadel, he was out of bounds. <laughs> One thing I guarantee you, somebody's right. That's still a great shot there by our camera crew. So here is the Citadel on the return at the 15, coming far side. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the 30. On the return for the Citadel was Romello Jones out of Plant City, Florida, Navy Prep. So 7 0 South Carolina State. Just joining us, I'm Tyler Cup, along with the coach Demetrius Davis. 5:52 remaining in the first on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus. Seven to nothing. South Carolina State leads Citadel. It is the home opener for South Carolina State. Kind of a weird schedule to start things out. They're 0-3, but they had a bye week, and they'll have another bye week next week. Yeah, because they played Jackson State, and so like basically what they call Week Zero, that mm -hmm. week didn't count. So yep. basically, next week will really be their bye week. Four down linemen for South Carolina State. Citadel with their second offensive possession. A little play action fake there for Fletcher. Going to throw over the middle, and that is incomplete. 
And boy, he had a man streaking downfield. That was Jay Graves Billups. And I was looking at Jay Graves Billups in the warmups and a good looking wide out. He's only got three catches on the year. As we take a look at the cricket replay, yeah, he had him there. He had him. Yeah, you see Zam Durham on coverage there. Great play action there. He actually was able to get a guy up the seam just, you know, with the pressure, just missed him. Four wide outs for the Citadel. Puts a man in motion. That's Cooper. And he's going to get the handoff here and got a little running room, but closed up quickly and brought down by Aaron Smith at the 34. Good for Wallace, a hard-nosed, tough runner for these Citadel Bulldogs. He's one of the team leaders and captains for this club. Out of Florence. Clock ticking, 5.20 remaining in the first. Third down and seven. Four wideouts once again. Fletcher looks to the sideline, doesn't like what he sees. Might have called an audible there. Still looking across the defense. Bulldogs loading the box here, and they're coming. Oh, and a hard hit and a one-handed grab for the receiver of the Citadel as he brought down at the 45. And there he is, Jay Graves Billups. What a great catch there. Ooh. Thought South Carolina State was going to get there with the pressure. Oh, Fletcher got hit hard. Fletcher stood in the pocket and mm -hmm. did what he's supposed to do and got the ball out of his hand. And a great play. And first down, Citadel. He took a hit. So here's the handoff to Cooper off tackle, right side. And it's a short gain, one, maybe two. And later they'll unpile. 430 remaining in the first. Javante Graves Billups at a Mobile, Alabama. A great catch. So why use two hands when you can just use one? You would never say that to a player as a coach. Not you to me. You would never. Not to me. Yeah, that's why I like to come up here on Saturday so I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Receiver to either side, two backs. A lot of different formations for the Citadel so far in this first quarter. Second down and nine, and they blow it dead here. I think you're going to get a motion penalty here. Look like maybe a guard put his hand down and might have picked it back up. Take a look at this offensive front for the Citadel Bulldogs. Cameron Moe out of Jacksonville, Florida. Sawyer Whitman, the left guard out of Gaffney. He's a true sophomore. Mark Tolucci is the center. Zach Blanchard out of Clover at the right guard position. Ben Brockington right down the road from Orangeburg Wilkinson, the hometown kid. 6'1", 210, sophomore. And the tight end, Patrick Sweeney. Not sure if we'll call his name, but an interesting story. He's a transfer out of Coastal Carolina. I haven't called his name yet. I've seen him down there on the field. But he is a big target for Citadel. Back to pass is Dustin Fletcher looking, and now he's going to run. Going to throw this one, and it's knocked down. Knocked down by Jalen Evans, the graduate out of Hartsville. You've seen Jalen make some plays out here. You made a great open field tackle about two or three plays ago. And he had to get his hands on the ball here, reading the quarterback eyes. Quarterback scrambles a little bit. He reads the eyes. And Jalen knocked the ball down. Great play. Saw Jalen Evans play in high school for the Hartsville Red Foxes. One of the most dynamic two-way players I've ever seen on the high school football field. He's playing DB, but when I saw him, he was playing running back, played a little quarterback, played defense, of course. But he was a great player for Jeff Calabrese. Two receivers to the far side, one on the near side. Out of the shot. Oh, what happened here? I don't know. I, the ball was snapped. I think we could get a timeout before. Timeout will step aside. Third and 14 when we come back. Seven to nothing. South Carolina State leads the Citadel on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus.
Back in the OBG, Willie Jeffries Field, South Carolina State leads the Citadel 7 to nothing. Citadel facing a third down and 14 at their own 42. As you take a look at Dustin Fletcher, I'll tell you, there's something there with Fletcher. I think they see the makings and the flashes of what he can be in this offense that's trying to spread it out a little more, going from the option look. Fletcher back to pass, good protection, throws far side, and it's incomplete. Citadel will come out to punt. They'll send out James Platt again. Well, they seem to have to be a, a composed quarterback. Mm -hmm. Don't we seem to have happy feet. He can stand in the pocket, and he also seems athletic enough to be able to get out of the pocket if he needs to. So for these two offenses, as you take a look at Fletcher getting some coaching from Patrick Covington, the offensive coordinator for Citadel, both these teams really struggling offensively. Bulldogs or the Citadel only averaging three points a game. SC State seven points a game. Both struggling in the passing game as Richard Bailey sets up a return here. He's brought down around the 25. When you have offenses struggling, Demetrius, does it take just that big play? Does it take just that one drive to kind of get things back in motion, get things back in rhythm? It only takes one play. One big play kind of gives you some the moat, what we call it, which is the momentum. And once you have the momentum going, then the team, it tends, like, next play, you can make a big play again, you make a big play again, next thing you know, you run out of real estate and you're in end zone. <laughs> so the more big plays you make, uh, the better opportunity or better chance you, you have to score. But these teams giving up a ton of yards through the air, especially the Siddle, nearly 300 yards giving up per game in the passing game. We talked about their DBs being their leading tacklers. That's something you do not want at this part of the season. Yeah, DBs play about 10, 15 yards away from the ball, so that means they're making tackles 10, 15 yards downfield. <laughs> Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. South Carolina State scored on their last drive. Here they are again. Going to bomb it deep over the middle, and it's incomplete. And there's a late flag. This could be pass interference. At least that's where they threw it in the area of. And trying to see who... That was on the coverage, Dominic Poole out of Randall in North Carolina. Yep. Just kind of hold him up a little bit, you know, just a little tug of the jersey. When the ball's in the air, that's something, you know, as a defensive back, you can't do, which defensive back probably is the hardest position on the field to play. You know, you have so much real estate to cover, and you're going against another athletic guy running down the field, so uh, they, sometimes there's that disadvantage. I think in today's game, they'll call that every time, especially when they see that the DB's arms extended, you know, and grabbing the jersey. I think they'll call it every time. Jersey pull every time is going to get called. Might have saved the touchdown there, actually. There's a handoff near side, and he's brought down just shy of the 50, and that's a young man I'm excited to talk about, Casey Fields. Iggy. He's only got 82 yards on the season and a touchdown, but he is an exciting young man out of Beaufort, South Carolina. He was part of that tremendous run in a state championship for Buford just a year ago. And he's a true freshman. And here is Corey Fields with a lot of real estate at the 30, 25, 20, and knocked out of bounds at the 15. I don't know if Corey Fields has had that much real estate in front of him in his entire career at South Carolina State, but he took advantage of it. Well, at least since we've been calling these games since 2019. That's <laughs> the only runs I've seen Corey have. But you can see the, the low option there, the low zone, and he pulls it. Shows some of the athleticism. We've been able to see him throw the football over the years, but we can see that he's also a dual threat guy out in open field. Dangerous on the run. He's that long type strider. So two receivers to the far side, one on the near side for SC State. They're back inside the red zone. Two receivers left, one right. Fields in the backfield. Going to be handoff near side. Casey bobbing and weaving down inside the 10 to the 8. Yeah, you can tell he's one of those guys that's tough to tackle in a phone booth. You know, you get him in the phone booth and you can't even touch him. <laughs> he got some, some shake to him, like a lot of guys like to say. You got to put the ball in his hand and watch him shake. <laughs> Three receivers on the far side. Different look here for the Bulldogs. As Corey's going to look to the sideline, getting the call from his coaches. And then 90 seconds to play in this first quarter. Get a good look at Corey there on the snap. 
Hand off near side, that's Casey Fields purring his way inside the five. Gonna be down around the two yard line. Some power running here. And this might be what you call buddy ball. This is buddy ball. I tell you what, I can only imagine how this off week has been at practice. It's been a physical, physical week of practice. And they can run in the football. And you can see these guys up front pulling. And, and you gotta give a, a shout out to these guys now because they're getting some push against the Citadel front seven. Out of the shotgun snap. Sets up a first and goal. Here's a handoff to Casey again. Powers way down to the goal line. No signal from the official. Looks like he's right there at the one. Boy, that is close, Coach. This is going to be second down and whoop. Not quite one. Quite one. <laughs> it's at the whoop. As Citadel's going to make a substitution here in their jumbo package. Going to bring in some extra beef on that defensive line. So second down and goal. Fields and Fields are in the backfield. Corey and Casey going to hand it off to Casey. Tries to get across the pylon. Does he get there? Oh, my. Citadel standing up on that defensive front, and they're getting fired up. Yeah, that, that's where the goal line defense come in. You saw the, the heavies coming in. Uh, you see the offensive line, the trenches, and you can see penetration in the backfield. That's what you don't want on the one inch or the wolf line. You don't want any <laughs> penetration in the backfield. There. So fourth down. We'll step aside. Goal line play upcoming. End of the first quarter. You're watching South Carolina State and Citadel on ESPN+. Plus. There is something greater than finishing first. True champions stand on principles. We fight for the right causes. We believe in the power of teamwork, whether in rebounding, receiving, or in research. In service and in sportsmanship. Only a few have what it really takes. We develop the talent. We unleash the potential. It all boils down to this. Now is the time. This is the place. We are MEAC. Learning that HBCUs are not only about networking, there's also secret handshakes. That's cap. HBCUs do not have secret handshakes, right? You mean this secret handshake? Cool. Wow. These guys are almost cricket 5G fast. We're kidding. There's no such thing as a secret handshake. Or is there? to South Carolina State University. Here you'll find unlimited possibilities for wherever you want your college career to take you. Since 1896, we've trained generations of scholars and leaders, building a legacy of excellence. Explore our stellar academic programs, including nuclear engineering, military science, biology, education, computer science, agribusiness, and more. Enjoy student-focused activities and organizations and discover your passion. Dare to be great. Enroll now and join our legacy of excellence at South Carolina State University. Something greater than finishing first. True champions stand on principles. We fight for the right causes. We believe in the power of teamwork, whether in rebounding, receiving, or in research. In service and in sportsmanship. Only a few have what it really takes. We develop the talent. We unleash the potential. It all boils down to this. Now is the time. This is the place. We are MEAC. 
It's a third down and goal. South Carolina State trying to go up two scores here in Orangeburg. Citadel has stood them up. Back-to-back -back plays. If you take a look at one of them here, Thomas Wyatt, one of the leaders on defense for the Citadel, the redshirt sophomore. And that was actually a better play made there by Carson Hatchett. Yeah, he definitely got in that hole and stopped him right there. Great spot, great call by the officials of uh, stopping him short of the goal. So Josh Shaw in the backfield for South Carolina State. So is Corey Fields at quarterback. And they give it to him on the goal line. No signal from the official. Oh, man, I think Citadel stopped him. What a stop by the Bulldog defense. Wow. So now it's going to be fourth and goal and decision time for Coach Buddy Pugh. Well, I'll be honest. I don't think it's much of a decision. I mean, you're 0-3, your home opener. Sure. Uh, your last year. <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point, you know, you, you get your guys in and you get in the end zone here. You challenge your offensive line. You challenge your guys up front. You need to be able to get a yard, guys. They put it on the far hash. Corey Fields at quarterback. Jawarn Howell in at running back. And we got a whistle. Might be a timeout here, and I believe it is. Seven to nothing, South Carolina State. All right, take me in the huddle, Coach. Let's start with South Carolina State. What are you telling the offensive lineman? Guys, let me tell you something. We got to be able to get one yard. I'm not asking you to get a fourth and five or a fourth and three. I'm just asking you to get one yard. So dig deep, put all your cleats in the ground, and let's come up and see if we can get a yard. Take me across the way. Coach Murray Straighton, what are you saying to them? Guys, I brought you here not to give up a yard. <laughs> I need you to bow your back and do not let this team get in the end zone. Tell you what, a stand here by the Citadel. You can just tell they're leaving it all out there after an 0-3 start as we take a look at Coach Oliver Buddy Pugh, the old Bulldog. Of course, he's a 1975 alum, earned both a bachelor's and a master's here at South Carolina State. All MEAC honors as an offensive lineman. A lot of people don't know about Coach Pugh. Coach Pugh was a math teacher. When he used to coach high school football, you know, not only was he a football coach, you know, a guy like me is a PE guy. You know, he's a smart guy. You know, he's a football coach that actually is a math major. <laughs> so out of the timeout, we're going to have a substitution here. Yeah, Nick Tate's helmet came off in mm -hmm. the last play, so the referee is going to make him be out for one play. Trey Franklin comes in in his spot. Jawarn Howell at running back. Two receivers. Corey Fields at QB. Hard snap count. Looks across the way at the sideline. Now they switch Howell to the left side. Still going backwards. Fourth and goal. And they're going to be stopped. Citadel stops them. Citadel makes the stop turnover on downs. Well, we talked about momentum now. Anytime you can give up four downs on the one yard line, that is what you call a defensive stop there. Listen, Coach, you got to give it up to the Citadel. This team has been decimated by transfers, and they have really took it on the chin week in and week out, giving up a ton of points. But a goal line stand and a stop here. Look at that. They collapsed that O-line and denied them. That was actually a loss on the play. Well, we talked about what each coach was saying in the huddle, you know, and, and apparently whatever Coach Drayton said, those guys believed it, and they got to stop there. Michael McDowell in on that stop. So now you're in the shadow of your own end zone. Citadel's just trying to get some room for their offense as they just lunge ahead. I think they were at their own two-yard line. Well, you just want to give yourself some breathing room here. Mm -hmm. you, know? you make a big stop there, a punt here is not bad. So you don't want to do anything to turn the ball over, give yourself a little breathing room. If you can pop a play here or there and get a first down, that's great, but you don't want to do anything crazy here. So second down and eight yards to go. What a stop by the Citadel. But now they're deep in their own end zone. Out of the shotgun snap, puts a man in motion. Kind of a pistol look formation. They hand it off to the back, and down he goes quickly. Not much going there. Give credit on the stop to Aiden Weber. Transfer for this South Carolina State defense. Redshirt sophomore 
transferred out of Delaware State from Pennsylvania. Fellow Miat guy coming down from Delaware. Must have wanted to come down and get some warmer weather. <laughs> get closer to the beach. Get closer to the beach. Yeah. Better cooking, too, I'm sure. I'm not sure how those biscuits are in Delaware. <laughs> or grits. Do they even know what grits are in Delaware? Uh, once you get past Virginia, they don't have a clue. <laughs> Third down at six. Here's a pass, and that was batted at the line. Batted at the line as they break it up. And that's going to force a fourth down again. And the Citadel will kick it away as we take a look at the Cricket Wireless replay. Oh. Patrick Goldbolt again. Is that Godbolt? God yeah. Again, yeah. Okay. I want to make sure I get this in. There are Bulldogs everywhere okay. watching us on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN+. Plus. We've got Eric Jones watching us in Greece. Oh, man. And we have my very dear friend Chip Galloway watching us in Lugolf. Eric Jones, a SC State alum, and Chip Galloway, a Citadel alum, down there in the Midlands. And there's a nice return for South Carolina State. They bring it to the 45-yard line, and we will step aside. 7-0. South Carolina State leads the Citadel. We'll be back after this on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Take a look at the Marching 101. We'll see them at halftime. South Carolina State. That's where we are in Orangeburg, South Carolina on the MEAC Digital oh, Network on ESPN+. Plus. South Carolina State Bulldogs have the football leading 7-0. Citadel forced a goal line turnover on downs, but then they had to kick it away at their own three-yard line. SC State has it back. Here's the handoff near side. Here's a big run at the 35-30. Powers his way for a first down run. like a Gaffney Indian guy, Tyler Smith. <laughs> yes, it is Tyler Smith, a redshirt freshman at a Gaffney, South Carolina. They know football up in Gaffney. Yeah, they played a couple games there. And listen, when the weather starts, to, when the temperature starts to drop, that's when they start playing real deal football. They had a big win last night over Fort D on the road. Fort Dorchester, not too far down the road from here. Three receivers. Corey Fields back to pass. Going to throw this one deep. Got a man far side. That's intercepted. Intercepted by the Citadel. Streaking down the far sideline. Here he comes at the 40. At the 50. Still on his feet. And he's going to be forced out of bounds inside South Carolina State territory. Oh, what a grab. 
Melvin Ravenel at a Goose Creek, South Carolina. <laughs> man, oh man, it looked like he had a man streaking down the far side, but Ravenel jumped the route. Let's take a look at the cricket replay. What do you see here, Coach? It looked like South Carolina State went to the wheel route there. And great play. Um, you can see the long rangey defensive back there that was able to just go up and get that ball and make a play defensively. I, I think Citadel might have left the offense in Charleston, but they brought their defense. <laughs> defense is here. The defense has played phenomenal, minus the 34-yard touchdown pass given up. 7-0. Citadel now has the ball, their best starting field position of the night. And we are under the lights here in Orangeburg. The previous play is under review. The previous play is under review. Was trying to see if he might have stepped out earlier. Yeah. He was getting pressure. He was forced out around midfield, and he stepped out. They say he stepped out towards the 40-yard line, so maybe he stepped out before that. Let's take a look at the cricket replay once again. Clean interception. And let's take a look at his feet down the sideline. All good there. Hmm. Not sure what the review is there. Not sure, guys. I would say that it was an uh, interception and basically just trying to make sure they're giving them the ball on the right yard line. Citadel was minus two in the turnover margin coming into this game. South Carolina State was actually plus two. And everything looked clean right there. Hmm. Melvin Ravenel. And he's a good-looking DB, 6'3", 175. Well, I could tell that he was long in range. I didn't know he was 6'3", but you can tell those long arms and those long legs, which those long arms what allowed him to go ahead and get that ball out of the mm -hmm. air that way. Kind of a sneaky 6'3", and they're trying to see where exactly he stepped out of bounds. So this may be the difference in five or ten yards here, possibly, for the Citadel offense as you take another angle at this. Well, when, when both teams 0-3, every yard matters. So yeah. they want to make sure they do it right, make sure they give the ball uh, where they're supposed to have it and make sure they don't give South Carolina State too much so that they have to defend more. So uh, great job by the fish aiding crew to make sure they make the right call. We talked about it very briefly. This is the first home game for South Carolina State in the month of September since 2019. you got to go all the way back there when they beat Wofford. They were double-digit underdogs to the Terriers and beat them. South Carolina State got the win straight up. That was our first game together, myself and Demetrius Davis on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus and didn't realize they were that heavy of a favorite until maybe halfway through the first quarter. I had, you know, checked the phone. I, I, did, I normally try to look at that kind of stuff, you know, and saw that, and that was when Wofford was having some real problems. They've had some coaching turnover down there. Yeah. But, of course, that was a... Solid season for flooding the Bulldogs back then. So here we go. They spot the football inside the 35. Dustin Fletcher going to roll to his right. Now he's going to keep it, and he's forced out of bounds, just shy of the 30. So it looks like they did move the football up after the spot. And now it's going to be a gain of one, maybe two. There you go. Second down and eight for this Citadel offense. As you take a look at Aaron Smith, first team all MEAC selection, as is Patrick Godbolt, who we called his name a couple of times, has a sack and a tackle for loss. Just getting started here in the second quarter. That flex bone type shotgun for the Citadel. Here's the pitch near side, going to be brought down there. Good assignment defense here by the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Yeah, anytime you play an option football, you want to make sure you tackle the dive, and you want to make sure you got somebody on quarterback, you got somebody on pitch. Mm -hmm. and you can watch the dive. The dive is secured here. Got a quick pitch, and you can see Mr. Fletcher run out there and just make a great open. I mean, Mr. Evans, I'm sorry, go out there and make a great open field tackle. Dylan Evans having himself a game. Third down and six. Out of the shotgun. 
four receivers, three topside. NC State looks like they're showing pressure. Now they put a receiver in the slot. And it's going to be a run for Fletcher right up the gut. And a good run as he picks up the first down just shy of the 20-yard line. Yeah, great uh, play call there by the Citadel. I mean, they were able to go empty. Uh, Sacramento State took all the linebackers out of the box and just went old-fashioned. You watch it. Quarterback draw here. You know, you kind of said it, Coach. This ain't your daddy, Citadel. This is, <laughs> this is a team that is showing a lot of different looks offensively, going five wide, four wide. They showed a little pistol. A lot of creativity for this Citadel offense. So they put the ball at the 21-yard line. First down run for quarterback Dustin Fletcher. Citadel is on the move. It's going to be a handoff. That's Crawford and a nice run up the middle as he gets it just shy of the 10. And looks to be enough for the first down from this angle. That is Johnny Crawford the third, True sophomore. And they are going to give him the first down. So first and 10, they spot the football at the 11. This is the best drive thus far for the Citadel. They are moving down the field. Three receivers right, none to the left. And that pistol look. Crawford in the backfield puts a man in motion. Crawford's going to get it off tackle. Bounces off a defender before he's brought down inside the 10. One thing the Citadel's doing, if you can notice it, Kyle, they're doing a great job of having different dive guys, having different guys come in motion. You can see it here to be the next pitch guy and uh, things of that nature. It was Jaden Jones in on the stop. Clock ticking. 8.23 remains. And South Carolina State, a couple of transfers, a couple of new faces this season. Here is a pitch far side. What a throw. Did he bring that in? And they're going to say he was out of bounds. Oh, my. Boy, what a throw there by Fletcher. I'd like to see a run back and replay on that. That was 88, Tyler Cherry out of Piedmont, South Carolina. Let's take a look at this. Mm. Yeah, we talked Ooh. earlier, though, every yard matters. You know, if that field was a little bit longer there, one more yard, and that might have been a touchdown. Yeah, made the catch, but couldn't get one foot in. Third down, eight yards to go. They can pick up the first down without scoring a touchdown. First down is at the two. Oh, and a broken play in the backfield. South Carolina State sniffs it out. Well, check that. I was full. That's a touchdown, Citadel. No, it was. No, no. Bad. Okay, I was right. I was right. I apologize. Well, you saw some of the extra. I, I saw a lot going on in the end zone. <laughs> My apologies. I got fooled everywhere. And it is going to be a tackle for loss, and it will force a field goal. Let's take a look at this, this again. I got fooled. Yeah, Fletcher got brought down by Godbolt. My apologies. And we had a field goal attempt here, and it is no good. We'll set it to break. 7.29 remaining in this Second quarter, 7-0. South Carolina State leads the Citadel on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Stand by. There is a flag down. Came in late on the missed field goal. They're calling it on SC State, but it's still fourth down. So that's another running into the kicker penalty, which it was fourth and ten, which on the first punt, it was fourth and five, which gave mm -hmm. them an automatic first down. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, give him another chance at the field goal, but at least it's not a first down. So a chip shot here, Demetrius. That's a short one. Well, coaching high school football, Tyler, there's no such thing as a chip shot. <laughs> you have to make sure this ball goes through the uprights. He hit a 49-yarder last week. Spot kick, and that is good. Gets a mulligan and knocks it through. 7-3, to three. South Carolina State still leads the Citadel. You're watching the Mead Digital Network on ESPN+.
And back on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus, South Carolina State leads the Citadel 7-3, a 25-yard field goal for the Citadel, Colby Kittner. And a 49-yarder last week and a short chip shot there that was helped by the penalty assisted by South Carolina State on the running end of the kicker. Gave him a second crack at it after he missed the first one and makes it 7-3. So Bulldogs will get the football back. Takes it just a yard into the end zone, coming far side, brought down just shy of the 20. And that's where SC State will put it in play. Kind of an interesting game, a lot of momentum swings. And the Citadel was able to take advantage of an interception, get it into position for a field goal. South Carolina State had it down on the goal line, trying to go up two scores and you could make the case that the Citadel kind of took that momentum, even though they weren't able to do anything with the ball on the other end, on the turnover on downs, but they've kind of taken that momentum with them. Well, I think it started on the first drive with uh, running into the kicker. Where yeah. You could have been off the field, and your defense had to get back on. And you get to the one and don't get in. So South Carolina State got to do something to get some momentum going here soon. 7-18 remains here in Jawarn Howe, breaking free out across the 30-yard line. That is a first down, and check that. Yeah, that is Josh Shaw, new back. Is that right? Yeah, 32, Josh Shaw. Yeah, Josh Shaw, we weren't prepared to see him, didn't see him in the stats, but he actually went in on one of the goal line plays, Josh Shaw. Josh Shaw, a redshirt freshman at Hanahan, South Carolina. So Shaw getting some carries, and he picks up a new set of downs for the Bulldogs. Shaw's going to get it again off tackle, and he's hit hard in the backfield there. That was Rhett Russell. Uh, Ackworth, Georgia, a transfer from Walford. Get a good look at him there. Second down and nine. Citadel has some tall, good-looking, long-rangey defensive backs. Mm -hmm. Three receivers. Pick that Shaw still in the backfield. Field's going to throw. Evades the rush. Still on his feet. Here he goes at the 35, and he's tripped up. At the 39. Corey Field showing us a little bit of the magician side of him. <laughs> now, magician, he can throw the football, he can run it. He got a little juke, so got it third and five. Give your offense a chance to stay on the field. Yes, sir. One of the few times that Citadel has pressured Corey Fields there in the backfield. Forced him out of the pocket. Positive gain, though. Third down and five. Three receivers right, two to the left. Five wide here. For SC State. Look at this front for Citadel. Here they come. He's caught by his intended receiver, and he gets it just inside Citadel territory at the 49. That was that tight end. We knew we would talk about him and see him eventually. The leading receiver for the South Carolina State Bulldogs, Keyshawn Tony, out of Williston, South Carolina, the transfer from Chattanooga. But that was impressive there. You know, I like to use the term handsy. I like to see receivers and tight end make those handsy catches. Mm -hmm. That was a great handsy catch by him. Keyshawn Tony, a good-looking player, 6'4", 230, graduate student. Four wideouts. Corey Fields going to be a delayed handoff here to the back. And I think that's Casey Fields. No, that's still Shaw. He's brought down at the 45. Casey Fields and Shaw built the same. <laughs> they kind of look like the same guy. They kind of yeah. got the same moves and the same kind of de demeanor about each other. So I can understand why it gets a little tough from up here. <laughs> On a four-yard gain, second down and six. Three receivers to the far side out of the shotgun. Fields looks to the sideline. Three down linemen for Citadel, but they're showing pressure. Corey going to hand it off to Shaw once again. Good blocking, but it's closed up quickly. South Carolina State just kind of making a good push. It feels like they're picking up at least three, four yards every time they hand it off. As you see Johnson, Sharp, Taste, Brown, and Moses Umorin, true freshman up there. You got Nick Taste, a first-team All-MEAC selection. Haven't talked about him much, but he's one of the team leaders for this Bulldog offensive front. And Eric Brown, Jr., playing center. 
Two receivers left, one right. Third down and three. Corey with the handoff to Shaw, trying to get the 40. He actually needed the 41 for the first down. And he's going to be just shy, according to the yard marker. Ooh. Clock ticking with 3.10 remaining in the half as we take a look at the cricket replay. Yeah, great run there. Shaw drops his hat and try to get that extra half yard or so. And great job by the defensive front seven of Citadel, making sure he don't get there. So fourth down and short. South Carolina State going for it. Fields under center. And he's just going to lunge forward for the first down. And he got it. I tell you what, that, when you're a shotgun team, that's some of the scariest times you ever have as a coach. When you move shotgun and you send your quarterback underneath to go quarterback sneak. Yeah. Uh, but great job by Fields and getting the first down here. Take a look at the cricket replay here again. Just trying to find an opening for inches on that play, and he did. Found a crease. He just fell forward for the first down. So it moves the sticks. Clock ticking to 11. Now the two-minute offense comes into play for South Carolina State. And it's going to be Jawarn Howe taking it far side, cuts it inside before he's brought down at the 38. I'll tell you one thing, just a short adjustment here as you get a look at Thomas Wyatt, who's had a really good game for the Citadel. Their tackling has been much better in the second quarter. You know, there were some broken tackles there in the first. They have... Clean that up here, have the Citadel. Yeah, just take a time, you know, get the, the jitters out, get some of the nervous energy out. And once you get that first hit, that's what they say, um, you ready to roll after that first hit. Mm -hmm. Two receivers left, one right. Play action fake, Corey Fields looking deep. Going to throw this, got a man and it's incomplete. Oh, just overshot him. Trying to see who the intended receiver was streaking down. That was Nigel Johnson, a freshman at a Sumter. Good to see him. Coach Buddy Pugh said on his coach's show that wasn't sure if we would see Nigel. Had an injury from two weeks ago. Yeah, that's one of those throws that Corey wish he could have back. You, know, you wish you could have that same mulligan that they had on the field goal attempt there yeah. to be able to connect. Third down and 10. Ball at the Citadel 39. Corey looks right, now he looks left, rolling to his left, throws, and did he catch it? Oh, they're going to say he brought it in. <laughs> oh, wow. Catch on his knees, that is Travion Houston at a Midgeville, Georgia military. Watch this. It didn't look pretty, <laughs> but you'll take it. A new set of downs is kind of like a brand new day. You know, no matter what happened last night, it's first down. So, great catch, great throw, great job by Corey extending the break. They'll call a timeout here. 48 seconds left. SC State is on the move. They lead at 7-3 on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus. We're back in Orangeburg as South Carolina State came out quickly out of that timeout. It was a crossing route to Justin Smith-Brown. It was a positive net on the play as they call another timeout here. Second down and short to go as Justin Smith-Brown. And we will step aside once again out of the timeout. 7-3, South Carolina State leads the Citadel.
All right, they're coming back, guys. Oliver C. Dawson Stadium, sunset, 7-3. South Carolina State leads it over the Citadel. And the Bulldogs of South Carolina State facing a second down and four. Just outside the red zone, three receivers down to the near side. As we come out of this timeout, 45 ticks left. Corey Fields back to pass, looking for Hal. Pump fakes, throws over the middle, got his man at the 10, at the 5, still on his feet, lunges forward for the end zone. That is going to be a touchdown, South Carolina State. Keyshawn Tony, the tight end, the leading receiver for the Bulldogs in his second touchdown of the season. Coach McGurk talked about him in the pregame. They said he really likes him, great blocker, great catcher. I think I see why now. He <laughs> keeps on Tony the ball. Welcome to Orangeburg. They said he's also a really smart player, too. As you see Tony going to line up for the extra point. Boy, what a weapon he can be for this Bulldog offense this season. Gavin Zimmerman with the extra point, and that is good. South Carolina State extends their lead 14 to 3. Keyshawn Tony, wide open, pops in. The MEAC Digital Network on ESPN. to three, South Carolina State leads it over the Citadel after a Keyshawn Tony touchdown reception, his second of the season. And SC State will kick it away with 37 seconds left as we are under the lights here in Orangeburg. And a great scene here for the home opener for South Carolina State after some long road trips. They were in Atlanta. Actually, they were in Atlanta twice, weren't they? Georgia Tech, Jackson State, and then UNC Charlotte. And here's a great return for the Citadel. Far side of the field, knocked out of bounds near the 45. A great return there by Romello Jones. He's had a couple of good returns today. You can get free. Get free. Uh, freshman. That, that, that's something that Coach Drayton want to hear. 5'11", 180 out of Plant City, Florida. Mm. Great return there. So Citadel's going to try to get something on the board. They do have a kicker who can get 50-plus. So may only need 25 yards or so. Maybe a little more than that. There's a little pitch and catch far side of the field. And that's a good way to start. 
Stops the clock with 27 seconds. That was Malachi Taylor, the transfer out of Coastal Carolina. Going four wide, here's a throw, and oh, was that intercepted far side? I think he was able to hang on to that. They're fighting for it. Did you see a great shot by our camera crew right under the officials? What's the call gonna be though? It's gonna be interesting because supposedly whenever it's a tie or whenever they both come down with it, offense normally gets it, but it seemed like the official was gonna give them the interception. That's Jamari Benjamin. What's the call here? They take the safe call. They said incomplete. Incomplete. Okay. That's interesting. As Benjamin is very disappointed as you take a look at it. <laughs> just kicks the ball away. Let's take a look at this. Comes down. I don't know. I think that's an interception. I think that's an interception too. Oh, boy. Benjamin and South Carolina State might have got robbed. Would they review this? It's under two minutes. A timeout is called. Yeah, they're going to review this one with 21 seconds left. And, boy, you look at that replay a couple of times. And Benjamin looked like he had it. His, it only need one foot. Say the NFL had one down, and he was going down with it. I think the question is going to be, did he have possession secure when he went down out of bounds? So 22 seconds left. It's a big call here. Citadel was moving the ball downfield, trying to get in field goal range. And you take a look at Coach Maurice Drayton pleading his case. <laughs> well, we'll watch this, and I like to watch the replay here, Tyler, because, you know, on Friday night, I'm the man on the stage, but on Saturdays, I get to be the man in the audience. So <laughs> as I'm watching this, I see him catch this ball here. Right. Seems like he has the most possession mm -hmm. of the ball right there as he gets his two feet down, and then after the – the extracurricular activities going on the sideline, I think at the end of the day, that's an interception. That is a great shot there on the cricket replay. I mean, that seems pretty clear for the officials to call that an interception for South Carolina State as you take a look at Coach Buddy Pugh. You can see Coach, he agrees. <laughs> Coach feels like that should be an interception also. That's a great shot there. I, I really like that area there that uh, new AD Keisha Campbell has done yes. back there in that end zone. That looks great. Looks fantastic. So Benjamin looks to have that interception. We'll see what they call it here. It's a big play. South Carolina State gets it. You know, they can go to the half with a two-score lead. Citadel was looking to get in position for a field goal to bring it within a touchdown. And we get to watch it again. I get there. Critique it again. You see two hands. Citadel has one. Or well, maybe two and a half. <laughs> I think it's an interception, though. But, you know, we don't have any input on that call. Now, I'm curious. If you're the Citadel here, your Coach Marie Strait and that offensive staff, do you have a couple plays already dialed up? You're going to just rush out there and throw something? Or you kind of talking about the what-if situations? The defense has got to be ready, too, right? Right, well. I'm a conservative guy. You know, I don't want to do anything crazy right here before the half, you know, mm -hmm. get the momentum shifted. Because we always talk about, you know, the, the most important part of a game is the five minutes before halftime and the five minutes after halftime. So, I mean, if you get a touchdown on a big play with 21, 22 seconds left, great. You turn the ball over right here, you know, it's not it's, it's not a good day. So I, I think the best play I would call there, which that's why I'm up here and they're down there, is I'll take a knee and go in halftime. <laughs> <laughs> So you take a look at South Carolina State and who they've played. They've already scored more points in this first half than they have in any of their games thus far. They lost 37-7 to Jackson State and then lost 24-3 to UNC Charlotte and then 48-13 Georgia Tech. That 48-13 score is a little deceiving. South Carolina State actually played fairly well at times. Georgia Tech kind of took advantage there in the second half. Well, anytime you're playing an ACC opponent, yeah. you're able to hold them under 50 and you're able to score. I'll be mm -hmm. honest, whenever we would go to Clemson or South Carolina, you know, you just want to get on the board, you know. Everybody wants to win, 
But at the end of the day, you know, there's a such thing called reality. Yeah. And, you know, we used to come back and say, man, we scored against Carolina. I remember one year we went to South Carolina and actually scored like, six, like 14, 17 points. So, you know, and whenever you can come out of those money games with everybody healthy yeah. and you score points, mm -hmm. it's a great bus ride home. You know, Coach uh, Buddy Pugh said in his coach's show about some of those games that there were times where they, they felt good about what they were doing. Timing was just off a little bit here and there. The ruling is that the, it's a reverse to first down, South Carolina State. And it is interception to South Carolina State. And that's a turnover. That's a turnover, and that's momentum. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about going into the half. Now you're going into the half with momentum. And if you're South Carolina State, 22 seconds, Having the ball right now is probably the most important thing. You know, Coach Pugh might decide that he want to take a shot here, but I wouldn't be surprised if Coach tell him, man, let's take a knee and get out of here. <laughs> As you take a look at one more time, that interception by Benjamin. As you see Buddy Pugh, let's see what he calls here. Uh, Jamari Benjamin at a Spartanburg High School. Red shirt junior. Well, they produce some great defensive players over the years. Oh, yeah. Brand new high school and stadium over there in the upstate. Still not quite dorming you. Still not quite dorming <laughs> university up there in Roebuck. So Corey Field's going to throw it here. Back to pass. Throws this one deep downfield. Got a man that is caught at the 20. 15 brought down at the five yard line. The ball squirts out though. Ball squirts out in the end zone. They're going to say he's down. They're going to say he's down. The clock has stopped with 14 seconds. Oh, that was Nigel Johnson on the reception. And you see why I'm up here and they're down there. Coach Pugh's being aggressive, <laughs> throws a post ball. I'm trying to take the tell him to take a knee and he throw a post ball with a great throw, great catch, get a timeout. Now you're first and goal. Nigel Johnson at a Crestwood high, a good-looking target there. You know, Corey Fields came close to connecting with him earlier in this game and just overshot him. 6'5", 190. Boy, what a body that is to throw to. Hard to miss that target. It's hard to miss that target, but thinking about 6'5", 190 and getting down the field the way he's getting down the field. Now that, for a freshman, I mean, that's a good-looking freshman. Buddy taking a chance at a risk. And giving these fans something to cheer about, but can he finish the job? It's going to be first and goal at the five as that ball squirted out as Johnson came down with it. But what a throw, what a catch. Well, that's one of them calls. You know, people say you make a good call, some people are name a road after you. But if you make a bad call, they're going to run you out of town on your road. They just name after you. So it's part of the coaching profession, man. When you make a good call, it works. Yeah. You know, so great call by Coach Pugh and his offense coordinator, Kevin McGuirk. So, first and goal at the five. Jawarn Howe is in at running back. Four receivers. Corey still at QB. Probably got two, maybe three plays here. Got to be quick. It's a man in motion. Corey going to throw. Rolls to his right. Caught by the receiver, but he's brought down and tackled for no gain on the play. That was Jordan Smith. Now they're going to try to huddle up here. Seven seconds left, and another timeout is called. They stopped the clock. So now it's pretty much it here. Got one play. I tell you, I'm finding number five. I'm finding Keyshawn Tony, that big tight end in the end zone somewhere. Right. You, know, you go to the end zone. Uh, or do you try to kick it here? Do you well, go conservative and get the three? In seven seconds, you feel like you can get a playoff and get a quick timeout. Sure. Uh, but you got to throw it to the end zone. you got to throw it to the end zone quick. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would expect them to do something quick in the end zone, incomplete pass, stop the clock, or if it is tackle inbounds, you can get your last time out. If they decide to kick it, Gavin Zimmerman, he's one for one, a 42-yarder. Kick that in the UNC Charlotte game. Curious what they do here. I mean, it appears, well, you don't know as you take a look at Buddy Pugh being very aggressive on this drive, you feel like he wants this touchdown. I mean, he took the shot downfield. Well, you don't take the shot down the field to not stay aggressive now. Yeah, so. exactly. That's kind of what I was going for there. You you finished my thought better than I could say it. <laughs> As uh, we send the offense out. So look at this formation. Two backs. Kind of a jumbo look package. Corey Fields at QB. 
Second and goal at the five, seven seconds left. SC State trying to punch it in. Oh, it's gonna be a little reverse pass, throws at the goal line. Oh, I don't know if he's gonna get it. It's gonna be at the one, and I think that's gonna send us to halftime. Gonna be down at the one, and that'll do it, won't it? Yeah. I think so. Let's see here. Little reverse pass. Just a little low for KC Fields. Yeah, didn't even corral it, didn't even catch it. Ball popped out, and that's how we send it to halftime with your score. South Carolina State, 14, the Citadel 3. To take a look at some of the highlights, we'll wrap it up, give you some stats during the halftime break. 14 to 3, South Carolina State leads the Citadel on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Fourteen to three, South Carolina State leads the Citadel here under the lights in a beautiful scene there at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. Louis Jeffries Field is the marching 101 is about to come out onto the field. Tyler Cup, Demetrius Davis here, and our full broadcast production crew and coach. What have you seen so far? Well, I we see uh, good looking teams, and we see some guys that's out here doing some things. And now the 101 is coming out. That's what I see. <laughs> All right, we'll step aside on the. 
MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus. More to come, including Coach Maurice Drayton. Fourteen to three, South Carolina State leads the Citadel at halftime. As you take a great look at the marching one hundred and one, some would say this is the real show. <laughs> this is what you see people still in the stands. Oh yeah, <laughs> concession stand lines are still empty at this point. <laughs> so we'll take an opportunity to take a look at these coaches and. Really, it's about Buddy in this final swan song as you take a look at his history of success. 15 winning seasons, a couple of MEAC Coach of the Year honors, two National Coach of the Year awards, two HBCU national titles, and how about that Celebration Bowl a couple years ago where knocked off Dion, who was the star and really still is, even though I know Oregon is kind of putting it on the buffs right now. But, you know, what a season that was just a couple of years ago for Coach Pugh. And, you know, he's had a lot of pupils that have – delved into coaching and one of those is coach Maurice Strayton of the Citadel and we asked coach Strayton to say a few words about coach Pugh. Well, we'll, well we'll hang on there but uh, before we get to that what do you think of coach Pugh and this success 15 winning seasons not many can say they've done that well I think it's hard enough to win one game I think a lot of people 
uh, don't understand how hard it is just to win a game. So any time that you can win uh, as much as he's been able to win, three MIAC championships, I mean two National Coach of the Year awards, two HBCU national titles, three MIAC Coach of the Year honors, I mean – this is Oliver C. Da- uh, Oliver C. Dawson Stadium, Willie E. Jeffers Field, but it needs to be the Buddy Pugh Buddy Pugh Bleachers or something. Uh, <laughs> need to be named after Coach uh, here in the next little bit. We got the Bill Hamilton press box here. <laughs> That's our guy. Uh, but yeah, it, there has to be something here. Maybe the field house or something out here for Coach Buddy Pugh and what he's meant to this university, and not just what he's meant to the school, but. So many young men and young coaches, young coaches that have gotten their start under him. Well, if it wasn't for Buddy Pugh, I wouldn't be sitting up here today. You know, uh, Buddy Pugh was my high school football coach. Uh, He actually brought me to the University of South Carolina with him after I graduated uh, playing football. And I was able to work under legendary Lou Holtz for two years because of Buddy Pugh. And then in 2002, when coach came to South Carolina State, uh, he thought enough of me to bring me down to Orangeburg, South Carolina with him. And I stayed here uh, with him for 10 years and I am the head coach of Fairfield Central today because of Buddy Pugh. Mm. You know, they hired me because they wanted to hire uh, somebody similar to Buddy Pugh. So I would be remiss to say that, you know, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. Well, from one coach that got his start with Buddy Pugh to another who had some success here at South Carolina State, we now take you to Coach Murray Strait with some memories coaching under Buddy Pugh. Coach Pugh, there are so many stories to tell. Here's three. I was a high school senior at Berkeley in Monts Corner, South Carolina, playing in the playoffs against Fairfield Central, where he led them to a national ranking. I knew at that time I wanted to be just like him. My second recollection, I was coaching football here at the Citadel. Coach Pugh's son was a kick returner for me and a receiver, a very good player. We went to the University of Maryland and got our butts beat pretty bad that night. And I was feeling pretty down. Coach just came up to me, put his arm around me, and let me know it was going to be okay. My last recollection, or the third recollection I want to tell today, is when I was working at Goose Creek High School as an assistant principal and a football coach. Coach Pugh had an available spot on his staff. He called me and said, hey, I want you to come talk to me. So I'm nervous, thinking I have an interview. And as soon as I walked in the door, he told me he was hiring me and the rest is history. He saw something in me that I didn't necessarily see in myself. Thanks, Coach. Zara, thanks to Coach Maurice Drayton for taking some time out and filming that video, sharing some memories of Coach Buddy Pugh and what he means to him and this university, 14-3, as he state leads the Citadel.
14 to 3 year score here at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. South Carolina State leads the Citadels. We take a look at some of the highlights here, Coach. And this was the first touchdown by S.E. Stinney. Yeah, great double move. Uh, good pass, good catch. You kind of question whether he was in or not, but the officials say he was in, so touchdown. That was Justin Smith Brown on the reception. And this was the interception made by the Citadel, which really turned things around and led to the first field goal, the first score of the game for the Citadel, that interception by Melvin Ravenel. And then this was Corey Fields to Keyshawn Tony, the big tight end, the 6-5 target. Yeah. Five different ball carriers for South Carolina State. They have over 124 yards rushing. And that's your score, 14 to three at the break. We'll have your second half kickoff in just a bit on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Fourteen to three, South Carolina State leads the Citadel here under the lights. Oliver T. Dawson Stadium. First game under the lights in quite some time here. Back to 2019. That game started, I believe, at five o'clock. 
Let's take a look at your trivia. Coach Murray straight into the Citadel, one of three Division I head football coaches that have spent time under Coach Buddy Pugh as an assistant at South Carolina State. Who are the other two? Think about that one. Cue the Jeopardy music. <laughs> you take a look at Maurice Drayton and the All Black. Kind of an interesting look there. No Citadel Blue there. What's going on? No, no Citadel pullover? I think most of you want to come in as the Dark Vader. I like it. The Dark Vader of the Citadel. <laughs> we'll give you that answer once you figure it out here in just a bit later on in the telecast. So we're ready to start this third quarter. Citadel will kick it away to South Carolina State Bulldogs. Well, they were 120 yards rushing, 177 yards passing, over 300 yards offensively for the Bulldogs. And that is a season high thus far. Well past. I think their most was about 260. And Citadel about to kick this one away. Three of five on third down conversions for SC State. Two of seven for the Citadel. And stat-wise, it sounds pretty good, but if you think about getting to the one-inch line and not getting in. Mm, yeah. Throwing the interception in the red zone, you know, and missing, you know, out on that opportunity right there before the half. Yeah, I think to your point, the Citadel knows this could be much worse as SC State has given up a couple of opportunities, squandered, rather, some opportunities as SC State will have it just across the 20-yard line, and that's where they will start this third quarter of play. And I'm curious who comes out at quarterback here. I do see Corey Fields. They told us, did the coaching staff, that we would see Andre Washington, but it will be Fields to start this third quarter. Of course, Andre Washington, the redshirt freshman out of Columbia. They like to put him in option situations. He can also toss it. But Corey Fields will be your QB to start this third quarter. Three receivers, four down linemen. Going to be a handoff. That's Casey Fields, far side, finds a crease out across the 30-yard line. Casey Fields has really exploded onto the scene for SC State. Wasn't really kind of in the mix out of summer camp, but has done a great job in practice and has shown the coaches enough to come out here and make some plays. But when you're a freshman, every practice, every meeting matters. So every day that you get an opportunity to show the coaches what you can do, it pays off and you get more playing time. Four receivers, bunch tight. Second down and short. A little swing out pass to the back. And, oh, that was a collision <laughs> on I-26. And he picks up the first down, just did. And that was Fields checking out. Jawarn Howell will come in. Hey, I like the way SC State is kind of switching in the backs, keeping fresh legs out there, fresh bodies. Yeah, that's a great thing. You know, but the good thing is they have three fresh bodies. That's good players that they can keep going in and out with. Mm -hmm. New set of downs. Three receivers. Fields looks across the defense. Drops back. Good protection. Now he's being chased. Going to roll this out to Howell. He's upended just shy of the 40. They really like to get Howell out in the flat. As we take a look at the cricket replay. Yeah, I kind of like the way Corey's been a, a game manager tonight. You know, a lot of times when you're a quarterback, you feel like you got to win a game on a play, but you always just tell the quarterback, just don't lose it on this play. Just give us a chance to live to fight another day. And yeah, we heard from the South Carolina State coaching staff is just getting Corey to kind of settle down and get in his zone, get in his rhythm, as here's a handoff to Hal Far's side, still on his feet inside Citadel territory at the 49-yard line. That is a nice run by Howell. Howell kind of reminds me of somebody, and I can't put my hand on it right now, but it's an NFL running back that kind of gallops, and he kind of runs up behind his pads, and he's tall and he's long. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come up with who it is. I'm curious to know who that is. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear that comparison. He is a very unique-looking back, that's for sure. Ball at the 49. SC State has done it through the air and on the ground on this drive. Fields back to pass. Good pocket. Throws over the middle. That's caught by Bailey for a first down catch. Oh, Bailey got crunched in between two Citadel defenders. 
Bailey, the graduate out of Hollywood, the high school teammate of Corey Fields. So those guys are very familiar with one another. Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell, okay. Of Le'Veon Bell, former of Pittsburgh Steeler. Kind of long, tall, could kind of stick his foot in the ground and find it in different uh, holes. So, yeah, he, that's Le'Veon Bell there for the rest of the day. I like that. <laughs> Three wideouts after the completion to Bailey. It's been a very methodical, well-called drive here by the SC State coaching staff. And off straight ahead, that's Casey Fields up the gut. What a hole made by that offensive front. Nick Tasty and Shark, Eric Brown Jr., Moses Umorin. Those guys have been fantastic on this drive. So we got a stoppage here. Second down and short. That was an eight-yard gain for Casey. Three receivers, play action fake. Fields back to pass. Gonna throw deep downfield and it's incomplete. Pass is incomplete. That was intended for Nigel Johnson. That might have been the same play. Might have been. That they had the big play that got down into first and goal before the half. He was double covered that time. It's third and short, you know, a lot of times you can be a little more aggressive when it's third and short. So South Carolina State took a shot there now. Line up now and get the first down. Third and two. Ball just inside the 30 at the 29. Corey Fields with three receivers. And here is the handoff. That's Casey Fields makes a shifty move. Picks up the first down at the 25. And then Casey Fields has a little stick in the ground to kind of offset or kind of compliment, I should say. Uh, some of the stuff that Howard does, but, you know, you can see him have a little Barry Sanders-like look there. You know? One thing that we always used to do in the recruiting meetings is if we were recruiting a guy, we tried to compare him to one of the guys that we had on the team. You know, he's, like a, that. he's a Barry Sanders-type guy. You know? <laughs> or the, a Demetrius Davis-type guy. We would say something <laughs> like that, and Coach P would say, offer him on the spot. <laughs> that was Cale Williams for the Citadel on the stop. He's had a solid game for the Bulldogs. Three receivers. And here's the handoff off tackle, and he gets brought down, and a flag comes in behind the line of scrimmage. Could be in the area of holding here. Yeah, normally when it comes from the back judge there, normally it's a hold. I often tell people that holding penalty sometimes is probably one of the worst penalties because it's a 10-yard penalty from the spot. Mm -hmm. so a lot of times it make you have first down and 20 and get you behind the chain. It's just a tough penalty to recover from. Took a look at the big boy, Cam Johnson, who's had a good game tonight, playing tackle. And here is Casey Fields after that holding. And Every offensive line coach in the country saying, it wasn't a hold, nobody held that. <laughs> <laughs> so they move the sticks back. It's going to be first and 20. Play action fake, Fields looking left, going to throw left down the near side. Oh, what a catch. And it's a touchdown, South Carolina State. Oh, another Sports Center top 10 grab for Justin Smith Brown down the near side. <laughs> I hesitated. I wasn't quite sure if he got in, but the official was standing right there. He was sure. He threw the hands up. And you see Benjamin and Justin Smith Brown. Doing a little shimmy shake celebration. Well, I'm starting to think that Justin Smith Brown like to make the tough catches. He don't like the, the regular catches. He want to make the tough catches and he want to make them for touchdowns. Can't wait to see that on the cricket replay. 20 to three, South Carolina State all over the Citadel. Boy, what a throw too by Corey Fields. Threw that only where the receiver could get it. Insert your cliche there about a tough throw. Tough throw. <laughs> Give your, give your guy a chance to make the play. There it is. There's another one. <laughs> so Gavin Zimmerman waiting to kick this extra point. Oh, they're going to review this one. Okay, so we're going to take a couple looks at this one. Our producers said we were going to take a look at it going into break, but they're going to look at this one to see if it was indeed a touchdown. So hold everything. Down the near side. Got one foot. 
That's that's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Yeah, even from the back angle, it's clear he got that foot in. Yeah, this one of those replays I don't think would take a long time. You know, he'd get up under there, he'd get on the headset and say it's a touchdown. Go back and tell him, touchdown, South Carolina State. <laughs> Here's a different looking angle here. This is pretty much kind of how we saw it. But when you talk about putting the ball in the bread basket, mm. that is clinic film there. You can take that to any clinic in the country, and you can talk about how you teach the quarterbacks to throw it in the bread basket. That is a touchdown. It stands and holds. And now Gavin Zimmerman will set back up for the extra point. The second touchdown reception of the night for Justin Smith-Brown. Okay, so that was a long touchdown pass. He's got to be close to 100 yards. And Zimmerman takes a couple of tries. Great shot there, the VIP section there. Yeah, great snap. We, we get to see uh, Caleb Brown snap the ball here. You know, there's a lot of time, the, long, the short snapper don't get a whole lot of TV time, so we're going <laughs> to shout out Caleb, see if we can get a good snap here. <laughs> Snap, hold, kick, and that is good. 21 to 3. South Carolina State is rolling over the Citadel here at Oliver Z. Dawson. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus. Oh, what a catch. So today's, we're going to call it Buddy Trivia. Coach Maurice Strayton of the Citadel, one of three Division I head football coaches that have spent time under Buddy Pugh as an assistant at South Carolina State. Who are the other two? Right there, Billy Napier, Florida, Tony Elliott, Virginia. Yeah, both of those guys spent time here. Billy was the offensive coordinator um, before moving on to go to Furman. Tony Elliott, uh, head coach of the University of Virginia. He spent time here, later on was the offense coordinator at Clemson. So all of those guys pretty much got their first job under Coach Buddy Pete. And it creates the conversation for a lot of high school coaches as a fair catch is made at the 25. You know, we were talking about formulating the trivia for the home slate of games here on the MEAC Digital Network. You talk about these high school coaches. You're one of them. You told your story at halftime. You've got Bennett Swigert up at Hillcrest. Top five team in 5A, by the way. Bennett Swigert doing a great job there. You've got uh, Corey Jenkins down in Dreer in the Columbia area. You've got Nigel Pearson at Spring Valley. Mm -hmm. His first year. Four receivers. Citadel 
down 21 to three. Handoff far side, and you know this is one thing that Citadel is going to struggle with this season when they get down like this. They predicate themselves run first, but when you get down, multiple scores, you're forced to pass. And Murray Straight, and that's why he's kind of implemented that five wide, four wide look, kind of being a little bit more aggressive in the passing game. And they do have a second and manageable situation. Five yards to go. And the option here, this is Cooper Wallace off tackle. Not much doing there. You know, listening to stories, uh, put out a Facebook and Twitter post earlier this week, getting stories from folks that have experience with Coach Buddy Pugh. It seems like he just wants to give individuals a shot at coaching. Just get them, give them a shot. You know, come on the staff, come here. You know, kind of feel it and just give him an opportunity. One thing I learned from him when I'm hiring coaches, you know, he really don't care about what you know coming in because he feel like I can teach you football. Yeah. But now I can't teach you how to be responsible, how to be dependable, how to be on time. You know, so he looked for dependable guys. Mm -hmm. So here's a little handoff near side for the center of the back. Not much doing there, but it is going to be just shy of the first down fourth down and one and that was one of the receivers on kind of a jet sweep type play Jay Graves Billups take another look at coach Buddy Pugh and this will send out the punt team for the Citadel for three and out for this SC State defense they have picked up some momentum off that touchdown made the stop forced the punt with under eight to play here in the third quarter in Orangeburg. James Platt to kick it away. Oh, it's going to be a fake. And not going to get it. Not going to get it. Bulldogs deny him. Turnover on downs. So South Carolina State denies them. They'll get the ball back. And they lead it 21 to 3 here in Orangeburg. We take a look at a defensive package here. It has been all SC State defense. Offense has gotten the highlights, but boy, look, check these highlights out. Anytime your defensive line can get penetration and get guys on the ground, you saw Aaron Smith, you see Jared Kersky, uh, you just see a bunch of garnet shirts around the football. And as a defensive coordinator, that's one thing you preach. 
You want 11 hats to the football. I want to give credit to Jared Kirksey, the defensive lineman who denied the fake punt for the Citadel. And here's a, <laughs> a nice little run here to get things started on this drive for South Carolina State. And that's Tyler Smith. I'm liking the, the trio of running backs that uh, South Carolina mm -hmm. State's been playing tonight. And all of them kind of bring a little different something to the game. You know, uh, you look at a little power, you look at a little speed, look at a little finesse, and I think that's something that South Carolina State going to be able to have for the rest of the year. Five different ball carriers for South Carolina State on the ground. So three wide outs here, two backs. South Carolina State denied a fake punt. And they've got it in Citadel territory. Wide open receiver caught inside the 10. That's Tyler Smith, the running back. Ooh, that does not look good there. That's the young man who had the interception. Coming up gingerly, Melvin Ravenel at a Goose Creek. Ooh. Favoring that right arm. Yeah. Anytime you see that right arm just kind of dingling, it's not good. But if you look at South Carolina State here out of 20 personnel set, kind of hit a uh, little wheel route there. Uh, Tyler Smith up the seam. Uh, linebacker didn't see him coming out. And great play, great play call once again by Coach Kevin McGuirk. Good, strong American first name, Tyler Smith. <laughs> <laughs> His mama, my mama, named us right. They think alike. And yeah, we got a flag down. Snap. Ball start. Offense. Okay. Ball start on South Five Carolina State. Still first down. Now, if you're South Carolina State, you've been here in the red zone a couple of times and you came out empty. You know, mm. this has to be a time that you got to be able to not only think about this game, you got to be thinking about the next couple games coming. And anytime you get in the red zone, we South Carolina State need to come out with points. So this is what you want to focus on now is being able to get points anytime that we're in the red zone. So out of the shotgun, Corey Fields going to roll to his right, looking, going to fire this one far side, and it's incomplete. Overshot is intended receiver. That was Jordan Smith. Second down and 14 upcoming, 6-0. Oh. Well, it's on the, on the scoreboard, it says 6 oh, eight. We've got 6 21 We've got 6 oh, eight. So two receivers right, one left. There you go. Corey Fields looks across the defense. Citadel showing pressure here. And it's going to be a delayed handoff inside the 10, down the near side. He's hit hard. That's Shaw on the carry. They nicknamed Shaw Turbo. Pretty good name for him. <laughs> All these backs, that they're not very big outside of Howell, but they're very yeah. strong, you know, compact. below the waist. Yeah, strong and compact. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set that photo here. Yeah. I'm going to set up your white balance, but uh, I'm going to wait to the Okay, okay. Never forget John Madden talking about Ladanian Tomlinson years and years ago. I'll never forget this. He said he runs low to the ground, hard for the defense to find. Right. <laughs> Three receivers right, put one in motion. Field's going to roll to his right, looking... Now he's going to keep it himself. Oh, what a somersault upended out of bounds. Oh, he gets up. He's okay. But my goodness. Boy, that is a dangerous play there. Flipped into the air. Let's take a look at the cricket wireless replay. Yeah, you watched it. I thought he might have had Jordan Smith that way he could have dumped it to him and gave him a chance. But I think Corey might have felt like he could take it in on his own. Mm. Thankfully, Corey gets up. He's okay. Checking with some of the coaches. And it's going to be a short field goal here. Inside the 10. On the far hash. High snap, spot, kick, and that is good for Gavin Zimmerman. Makes it 24-3 with 4.33 remaining here in this third quarter. And the Bulldogs get points out of the denied punt there. And we'll have it for you here on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus.
the Citadel too. Twenty-four to three, South Carolina State picks up some points for that last red zone trip. The Citadel will get the football back. We'll take a look at Coach Buddy Pugh and his MEAC championships, three MEAC titles. Coach Maurice Drayton for the Citadel was a part of those 08 and 09 teams. Five shared MEAC titles, last one in 2019, and four trips to the FCS playoffs. Yeah, I was there for the 2008, 2009, and 2010. We went to Appalachian State in 08 and 09 and ended up going to Georgia Southern uh, in 2010. Mm. So here is the Citadel on the return. And a good push there up to the 30. Coach Demetrius Davis, my broadcast partner, you talked about you were on this SC State staff back in 08 09 and some great success there. Maurice Strayton, the Citadel coach, was on that staff. There were some other coaches that are on the Citadel. We showed the graphic earlier in the game that were part of that SC State staff as well. Yep, Danny Lewis, uh, tight ends coach for the Citadel, was actually on that staff. Uh, he actually coached uh, Danny Lewis and Coach Drayden after came from the Citadel to South Carolina State, now back to the Citadel. And Keith Jones was a defensive back coach for Coach uh, probably in the 12, 13 years. So here's a throw over the middle, and that is caught by the intended receiver up to the 45-yard line. And that's been the best receiver thus far for the Citadel. Jay Graves Billups, redshirt sophomore. Good-looking wide out. New set it down, Citadel going no huddle. Hand it off far side for a short gainer there. Citadel knows they need to move the ball and in a hurry as the clock is under four to play in the third. Still plenty of time here, but they've had trouble moving the ball, so they got to show a bit of sense of urgency there up front. Yeah, down 21 points, the clock is not your friend. So you have to score, you have to score fast. So, you know, if you want to get in the end zone, you want to get in fast and South Carolina State can have them drive long drives, and South Carolina State wins. So a roll to the right, throws, and that is caught by the receiver close to the first down inside SC State territory. Good little pitch and catch there to one of the wideouts, Tyler Cherry at a Piedmont, Wren High School. Oh, look at that, tiptoe, great awareness, great control. Forced out by Zan Dunham. So bunch tight formation look here. And it's going to be a keeper for the QB, and he's going to be brought down just shy of the 40. And this is going to be a new quarterback, Grayson Underwood. We knew we would see him eventually. The Citadel coaches told us they would probably play both of them at some point. So Grayson Underwood into the game. Interesting story for this young man. He's out of Irmo, so not far from Orangeburg. Played for the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes, but he did not start. He was part of a lot of great teams that won state championships. He was behind some really good quarterbacks. And there's a throw and incompletion there. Stops the clock. But I talked to some media members on the way here because the name sounded familiar. I covered high school football for many years down in the Midlands before I moved to Rock Hill. And... I asked some media members about him, and they told me, yeah, he played for Dutch Four. Didn't get a whole lot of playing time, but always had a great attitude. And talking to the coaches uh, earlier today, they just beamed about him. Talked about how uh, a great attitude and a great kid that he is. But not getting a lot of playing time at Dutch Four is not as bad as it sounds. There's some great players and great quarterbacks that's come through that program. Mm -hmm. A dynasty there for Dutch Four. What is it, six state titles? Eight years, something like that? Back to pass is Underwood, throws far side. And he's going to be brought down after a first down pitch and catch. And once again, that's Tyler Cherry. Tyler Cherry with over five catches on the season. For the junior. So here's a run by the QB. That's Grayson, gets it to the 30. It's a positive game. Good drive here by the Citadel. They're moving the ball downfield, getting in position, down by three scores. It is not over by any means here. Plenty of football left, but the clock is ticking. The clock is not your friend, as Demetrius said. 
142 left. Bunch tight, no huddle here for the Citadel. Grayson looks to the line, and we've got a fly. Motion up front. Motion. I think we're going to get false start by left tackle. So today is South Carolina State University faculty and staff educators, agriculture and land, Grant Garnet Day. Say that five times fast, I dare you. We uh, actually saw some of them at the elevator this morning. We did. It's amazing how you go from second and medium to second and long, you know, penalties. But I think sometimes we don't understand how big penalties are. I mean, you're 21 points. I mean, you're three touchdowns down and you get penalties. It just it makes you shake your head. So it's going to be a throw near side. That's incomplete. Brings up third down and long. 109 left, and it has been a great crowd here today. South Carolina State and the Citadel. We knew the Citadel would bring a great crowd. You know, we talked about this. Only the fourth meeting between these two teams. You know, really not separated by a whole lot. You know, what? Hour down the road, maybe a little less than that. 45 minutes down the road. I would like to see South Carolina State consider to keep this thing going. I think this mm -hmm. is great for South Carolina. I mean, it's great for the state of South Carolina, for both institutions. Here is Underwood. Flag is down. He's going to be well shy of the first down. Curious what they threw this flag on, though. He was not in the area of holding. I think we do have a hold. It was the holding. Yep. Call that hold on the center. Mike Partolucci. Redshirt sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. One of the old school big shoulder pads there. Look at those. <laughs> that big neck pad. Yeah. Remember Brian Cox used to wear those? Oh, yeah. Yeah? That means he's tough. <laughs> those pads are synonymous with being tough. <laughs> I'm a Miami Dolphin fan, but I always respect it. Uh, Brian Cox there on the Jets. Many years. He's a good player. Under a minute. Back to passes. Underwood going to throw this one deep over the middle, and it's incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Brings up fourth down, and oh boy, long way to go. Fourth down, and we'll call it Santee. Fourth down and Santee. I think that would be pretty good because that yeah. it was almost fourth down and something, <laughs> which is a little longer, a little further away. Yeah, a little further down. <laughs> so Citadel will come out to punt it away. Let's take a look at the Citadel sideline and Coach Maurice Strayton. Fair caught just outside the 10. So 30 seconds. Stops the clock with 26. You know, take a look at Coach Murray Strait and curious your opinion on this. Obviously, it's going to be an uphill battle. He has said that openly. We're not talking out of school. Coach Strait is very open in his press conferences, very revealing. What do you think needs to be the key factor for him to kind of get things turned around? Is it coaching staff? Is it players? I know a lot needs to happen, but what, what do you think is the first thing? Just continue to do what he's doing, you know. Anytime you go into a, a first year situation, he's the head coach at the Citadel for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the Citadel, if he went into a program that was winning and winning had all these great players, then they probably wouldn't need him. You know, the, the other coach would still be there. So just stay the course, put your system in place, uh, get some of your guys in there, and, and, and see what happens. But I think he's going to be fine. Just because uh, I'm looking at his team, they, they look good, they look disciplined, um, they look like they'll work hard, and I think. He's been around enough good coaches in the NFL and Coach Buddy Pugh that he'll get it together. Yeah, defense playing very tough and physical. There, there's, there's some flashes there on that defensive side as we're going to come to the end of the third quarter. Your score, South Carolina State 24, Citadel 3. Fourth stanza coming up on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus.
Oh, okay. Start of the fourth quarter, South Carolina State in their home opener, leading the Citadel 24-3. As we take a look at some scores from around the MEAC on the MEAC Digital Network, the MEAC preseason favorite, North Carolina Central, takes care of Mississippi Valley State. Miami of Ohio takes care of Delaware State. Look at that with Albany. On top of Morgan State, start of the fourth quarter there. In Norfolk State, it's the win over Towson. South Carolina State will not start MEAC play for another two weeks. they got a bye week, and they've got Virginia Lynchburg coming to town, and then they will start conference play. You are correct. So, SC State with the football. It is still going to be fields, and it's a little reverse here and a lot of room to run at the 30. 40 brought down across the 45-yard line. Oh, what a nice run for Jordan Smith. Well, if you want to have a play, you can see fake speed option, reverse, little trickeration, and you can see Jordan. Woo -hoo -hoo, what a move for Jordan at a Ridgeview High School. I called a couple of his games that he was electric. Still is. Still is. Oof. And he was dangerous. Three receivers. Play action fake. Field's going to throw near side. That's Keyshawn Tony at the 40. 35. Stiff arm. Still on his feet. Finally brought down. Well, now they blow the whistle as they bring him out of bounds. And some jawing going on down there on the sidelines. But the officials let it go. Keyshawn Tony feeling himself. But I think I have a new favorite player. So I, <laughs> I think it's Keyshawn Tony. He's big. He's physical. Man. Uh, great hands. That's what you want at tight end. Give me 11 at number five. Give me 11 Keyshawn Tonys. Yeah, I used to tell guys I wish I could copy and paste him <laughs> in other times <laughs> on the field. Boy, what a player he's been tonight. Just getting started here in the fourth quarter. SC State is on the move, trying to put this game on ice. KC Fields, short gain there. 24 to three, your score, and you feel like Coach Davis, another score here in the end zone puts this one away. Yeah, I think that puts you in control. I think that gives you an opportunity. You know, you've had a tough uh, three games previous. Give you a chance. You want to give some guys that normally don't get a chance to play a chance to get in the game and play. You know, you right. keep guys interested, keep guys mm -hmm. engaged. So uh, one more score, and I think we'll see some new people. So out of the shotgun, four wideouts. Corey Fields going to swing it out. That's Howell. And he's upended. Ball comes loose. Howell goes to pick it up. And what's the call here as they scramble for it? I think they're calling him down. Yeah, I think so too. Good awareness, though, by the Citadel to stay on top of it. So let's see here on the quick hit replay. Yeah, down. Yeah, he's definitely down. <laughs> dangerously down as he was upside down. Head first, Jawarn Howe. So an interesting play call coming up here. Third down. It says on the scoreboard, okay, now they fix it to 12. Yeah, just third down and long. Four wideouts. Back to pass his fields. Good protection here. Going to throw this over the middle. That's Keyshawn, and it squirts out. It squirts out. Had it in his hands. And I'm curious if we get a replay on that. Was there a helmet on a ball that popped that one out? I think so. I think that was a, a great defensive play. It looked like Justin Priester mm -hmm. uh, was able to get in on that play. I hear my defensive uh, coaches a lot say, bite the ball. You, know, you <laughs> see the ball, go bite it. You know, Coach Tim Boyd does a good job with my guys. And it looked like uh, Priester went and he was able to go and Bite the ball right there. Yeah, that's exactly what happened there. So shout out to Priester there. We talked about these DBs and linebackers. They've got some good looking players for the Citadel. All right, they're going to go for it here. Fourth and 12. Citadel drops back in coverage, and it's going to be a screen pass. Tyler Smith has it at the 20, at the 15, still on his feet at the 10. Five, and he's tripped up. A touchdown saving tackle. First and goal for the Bulldogs. And I think that was Dominic Poole who tripped up Tyler Smith. Yeah, I think so. You can see the replay here. Nice little slow screen. 
What a great play call. Great play call. You get to see those big guys get out there and lead the way, you know. Tyler Smith really does a lot in space also. I know. I think that was Priester who uh, was able to grab Tyler Smith. All right, first and goal. Ball at the two. Hand off to Tyler Smith to try to finish it off. That line pushes him through. Touchdown, South Carolina State. There is your dagger. Tyler Smith at a Gaffney. He had that big catch and run out of the screen on fourth down and made it first and goal when he cleans it up with the score. Gets the finish. <laughs> Spot kick and that is good for Gavin Zimmerman. And we'll step aside 31 to 3 all South Carolina states on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus under the lights in Orangeburg. Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. 31-3, South Carolina State leads the Citadel in a battle of the Bulldogs here at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. A one-yard touchdown run by Tyler Smith. Maybe put this game on ice, as I called it, the dagger. It's going to be tough for Citadel to come back, but crazier things have happened. When you get to this stage of the game, you know, if you're South Carolina State, like I said earlier, you want to get some guys in the game. If you're Citadel, you want to try to see how your guys going to perform when things get tough. You know, it's going to be a long season, but we can't quit, you know. So it'll be interesting to see how these guys finish the game. So 31-3, to SC State on top of the Citadel. The Citadel will come back out here, first and 10. We'll see what quarterback will make an appearance. Okay, so this is Grayson again, his... Second drive as the QB. We saw Dustin Fletcher for the first three quarters, and it has been Underwood since he is a junior. I think Fletcher's your future, though. He showed a lot of flashes of what he can do as Underwood's going to throw here deep down the middle, and it's incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Looks like we've got couple of backups in for South Carolina State. That was Landon Owens, the intended receiver out of Monroe, Georgia. Redshirt sophomore. You look like you had DeMarcus Doe mm -hmm. uh, out of Williston on the coverage there out of Williston Elko High School. Well, 
Three receivers Underwood with a play action fake and a roll to his right. Throws and that is caught by the receiver and he's going to be cut down. Looks like he just got the first down. And once again, on the reception, that was Landon Owens. He had, actually had a chance to see Sherrod Burroughs uh, get in on the tackle there out of Mullins High School in Mullins, South Carolina. Getting some guys, like I talked about earlier, getting some guys a chance to get in the game and get some film. Mm -hmm. Give everybody an opportunity to get better. Oh, Underwood dropped the football, picks it up, though. Now he's going to be on the run, and he's brought down. And that was a great play on the D-line made by Brandon Tucker, graduate out of Blythewood, South Carolina. The one thing you can see on these rosters that you don't get to see a lot is the graduates, you know, because of the COVID year yeah. and things of that nature. you got a lot of graduate guys or guys that have finished their degree and awarded the opportunity to play their last year. Mm-hmm. So, oh no, fumbled the football and they pile on it. See who got it. There's still a scrum for it. See who got the football. Looks like the Citadel was able to retain. That's one thing you can say about the Citadel team that, you know, does the option, a lot of running. Haven't really put it on the ground until that moment right there. Oh, that was just a bad handoff there. Yeah, I think a little miscommunication. I think the quarterback wanted to pull it. Mm -hmm. Running back wanted to keep it. You know, and things like that is just something over repetition you just have to do during tracks. But, you know, what Siddle's doing now, you know, they're trying to do a lot of zone read. They're doing some dive options, some things of that nature. You know, they're doing a lot of things, so they have to practice a lot of things. That's a great look on the cricket replay. Underwood now. And here is Owens again off the screen. And he gets it inside South Carolina State territory. That was a third down and 14, and he picked up 20 on the play. Owens into SC State territory with a catch and run. Yeah, you can see the screen play. Citadel coaches can see where the defensive line were getting aggressive. Anytime your defensive line getting aggressive, you try to hit them with a quick screen play. Great call by the Citadel. Hey, and a great job by that Citadel offensive line blocking downfield. And I saw the running back, Cooper Wallace, one of our cricket impact players, Making some blocks. Underwood going to throw far side. Got his man. Forces him out of bounds. That is Tyler Cherry on the reception. So Citadel moving the ball here. 8.21 remaining in this fourth quarter. Talking to some Citadel alums. They are very excited for Coach Murray Strayton. They know it's going to be tough sledding to start. But we've seen some flashes. We've seen they're getting the right players in place. You know, they got some freshmen and sophomores we want to talk about the future is bright. The Citadel team has got some really good talent. Underwood back to pass, throws near side, and it's incomplete. Yeah, and, and you just have to be patient. You know, in our society now, you know, mm -hmm. we are the microwave society. You know, nobody watch long movies anymore. They watch TikTok. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I tell my kids all the time, you know, you can't keep kids' attention now for over about 10, 15 minutes. So uh, if, if Citadel... Uh, brass, I should say, for lack of a better word, give uh, Coach Drayton the time. I think that they'll be happy with the results. That's funny you say that. I, I, I tend to be a film nerd, but I got to tell you, three hours in a movie theater with Oppenheimer, a little long. I enjoyed it. <laughs> a little long, though. I looked at, my, uh, looked at my watch a couple of times. Still enjoyed it. Get an Oscar to my guy, Robert Downey. Underwood back to pass, throws near side, and I don't think he corralled that football. I think he dropped it. Yeah, that's going to be incomplete. Fourth down upcoming. Citadel's going to go for it here. Take a look at the cricket wireless replay. The ball kind of came out funny and wasn't able to hang on. I think he was thinking about that green grass in front of him. His eyes got off the football. You know, you often tell receivers, take your eyes and your hands to catch the football. But a lot of people just think it's just your hands. <laughs> Out of the shotgun snap, fourth down here. Can SC State hold or will Citadel continue this drive? Underwood back to pass. Going to throw near side, and that is incomplete. And that's a turnover on downs. And another stop for the South Carolina State defense. You know, Demetrius, we've talked a lot about this offense, and 
what they're able to do on the ground and the air. Corey Fields seemed to have his confidence back tonight. But this defense is getting a lot of confidence and momentum at the right time. Well, if you think about some of the miscues in the first half, the defense is what kept them in the game. So we'll step aside here. 738 remaining in the game. 31 to 3. South Carolina State leads the Citadel on them. And we will stay here. We thought we were going to have a TV timeout, but we'll stand by. Okay. So South Carolina State will come out on offense. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. And we got a whistle and a flag. And you have a new quarterback. It'll give you a chance to talk about your new quarterback. Yeah, this is the young man we thought we were going to see maybe a little earlier, but we're still seeing him nonetheless. Andre Washington, a redshirt freshman at a Ridgeview High School. He's got 107 rushing yards through the first three games. Had a really good game against Georgia Tech. He's thrown a touchdown and an interception, but a good-looking QB, 6'4", 200 pounds. A lot of poise. For Andre Washington. Handoff straight ahead. Not much doing there. <laughs> and I think about with uh, Corey being a senior or being a grad, I should say, you know, I think Washington might be who they're looking for to be the future. Sure. Know? But now they do have some other good quarterbacks. Um, From on this team. Franklin. Yeah, Franklin's one of them. Yeah. They got a couple more. So uh, the Quarterback room for the next couple years and at South Carolina State looks pretty good. Oh, no doubt. A very talented quarterback room. Three receivers handoff off tackle and kind of dives in for a short gainer there. This will bring up third down and we'll call it nine yards to go. 31 to three year score. Clock ticking, 652. That was Shaw on the carry. We've got some new players checking in for South Carolina State. I see Hezekiah Massey, redshirt junior out of Clover. He made some plays last year in the yep. 2022 season. He did. Four receivers. Andre Washington back to pass. Third down and long. Throws, and that is caught. <laughs> and guess who? I think that's Hezekiah Massey, was it not? Yes, it was. Massey on the far side picks up the first down on third and long. What a great throw to be able to throw that deep comeback um, from the almost the opposite hash. It wasn't the opposite hash, but it gives you a chance to see how strong Washington's arm is. Hezekiah Massey, his father, was a longtime administrator in York County. He's now in Chester County. Great guy. And his son made a big play there for SC State. And here is Andre Washington with an option keep to the 30-yard line. That should be enough for a first down on first and 10. Oh, going to be a yard shy, second and one, clock ticking, 544. I like the way that uh, he's coming in and taking advantage of his opportunity, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people say opportunities are never lost. They're gained by other people. So uh, Washington say, I'm going to get in here and take advantage of my opportunity. I ain't giving nobody else to take advantage of my opportunity. <laughs> Two receivers on the near side, one on the far side. Andre Washington, your quarterback. And he's going to keep it on the option. Picks up the first down just inside the 30, but a flag is down. <laughs> Flag came in. You know who you reminded me of when you said opportunities are never lost? Who was that? That would be LeVar Ball. Never lost. One-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Michael Jordan, one-on-one. -on -one, never lost. Never lost. You remember that? I don't. When he had the audacity to go on national TV and said he never lost right. to Michael Jordan. Or would never lose. Would never lose. Get out of here. That guy. His son's a great ball player. Yeah. Face mask on the Citadel will tack on 15 yards after the run. So this will be a new set of downs inside the 15. Under five minutes to play. Out of the shotgun, three wideouts. Andre Washington stands at the 20. It's going to be an option. Going to keep it himself here, and he's hit hard just shy of the 10. It is a positive game, far side. Yeah, to try to run a little speed option to the boundary. Saw the pitch, guys. I guess, you know, South Carolina State working on things. Like I say, once you have this kind of lead in the fourth quarter, you can get some things, get some tape, see some things on film, some things work. Uh, next week, you've got another bye week. You can find some more stuff that worked for you. And yeah. If you can hit 
all your cylinders at the right time, you still got a chance to have a pretty good season. Second down and seven. And trying to stay on his feet in the back. That's Shaw, and he's going to be brought down deep in the backfield. Oh, boy, and give credit on the stop way in the backfield. It's a new player for the Citadel. That is Maurice Bonneau, redshirt freshman out of Rock Hill. Diamonds up for those Bearcats. Yeah, they had some good players come out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Quite a few out of Football City, USA. That's what they call themselves. Quite a few. Self-acclaimed. <laughs> you know, I had this note that I meant to give in the first half. I got to get it out. As a broadcaster, you, you try to develop so much prep, and you hope you can get it all in. And we'll see what happens here after this third down play. Third down and 13. Washington takes the low snap, going to throw this one, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by the Citadel down the near side. And he's brought down across the 15. And, oh, my goodness, four flags thrown. Oh, boy, we've got some chatter here, chippiness. After this interception, I don't know if it was late hit. I mean, that's what it felt like. And Buddy Pugh trying to separate this. Talking to Shaw. Mm. He's getting an earful. Yeah, I can, I can tell you what he's saying because Coach – Always said half class, you know, don't no late hits, no penalties, no foolishness, no unsportsmanlike things of that nature. So I can I'm glad the mic was not on coach just now as he was talking to Shaw. Personal foul on South Carolina State after the interception. So it'll be a new set of downs for the Citadel as they get the interception. 321 remaining in the game. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus. Thirty-one to three, your score. South Carolina State leads the Citadel as the Citadel will have the football after the interception. As we take a look at next week's game in the MEAC, all on ESPN Plus and the MEAC Digital Network. Howard at Robert Morris, good one between Campbell and North Carolina Central, North Carolina A and T at Norfolk State. First and ten, Citadel with a. Little flat pass to the back, and oh boy, he got moving inside South Carolina State territory. Nice pitch and catch there. And on the reception, that was Hayden Johnson out of York. 
So here's that interception. It was made by Cooper Johns at a river bluff. And another pitching catch here down the near side. And I wanted to tell this story. A Citadel alum told me you have the six degrees of separation. Maurice Strayton, of course, the coach of Citadel, coached at South Carolina State. But when he was a, uh, a senior with Citadel, in practice he guarded Buddy Pugh's son, who was a freshman on the practice field for the Citadel. How about that? Oh, no, Bud Pugh. Bud Pugh. How about that story? Oh, wild play here as the ball is loose. It was a knockdown throw, I think. I missed that one. I think he tried to throw it, and it was just knocked away. And you see Mc Jamal McKinney at a Timberland High School. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, they do say, Tyler, it's a small world after all. You know? so <laughs> when you be around an uh, area for so long, you know, it just everything kind of comes full circle. You, know? you meet people. You talk to people. Everybody know everybody. So roll to his right, throws, and that is caught down the near side. That's going to be a touchdown for the Citadel. And that is our, oh my, yeah, that's him. That's our cricket impact player, Cooper Wallace from West Florence. And we talked about this earlier. If you're Coach Drayton, Coach Drayton, I mean, you're down right now, but you don't quit. You know, you, you build off these type of moments. And you say, guys, this is what happened when we continue to play. We could have quit. We could have stopped, you know, uh, believing in what we're doing, but continue to play, finish the drill. Boy, what a great play made there by Cooper Wallace. So up and good. 31 to 10, 2 11 remaining here in the ball game on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus. Back in the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus, 216 remaining in this contest. Check that, it should be 31 10. Sidler will just score. Cooper Wallace caught it at the 30 and took it the rest of the way. And their first touchdown of the game, 31 10. Onside kick here. And it's caught by SC State. And we will step aside once again. 
2.15 remaining in the game. SC State will close it out on ESPN Plus here in Orangeburg. South Carolina State going to close this one out, leading 31 to 10 with 2:15 remaining in the game after the Citadel scored with Cooper Wallace. Andre Washington going to hand this one off. Curious if Citadel starts to take some timeouts here, or if they let this roll. Yeah, I think at this point you let it roll. Yeah. Regroup. Mm -hmm. Get ready for next week. Uh, if you're South Carolina State, you know you this. One of the best parts of the game, what we call two-minute offense, where you're just trying to get the two minutes off the clock. Um, <laughs> to get to that victory formation. That, that is the best formation <laughs> in football. <laughs> you can get the victory. So. <laughs> 31 to 10 will be your final unless somebody breaks one here. I see State Bulldogs just trying to run this one out. And this is Andre Washington right up the middle. Picks up the first down, and that should just about do it if Coach Murray Drayton does not want to stop this clock, which it appears he does not. Boy, helmet came off. That is Javon DeBose out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, you know, whenever your helmet come off, you have to come off for one play, mm -hmm. uh, which is the rule basically in college and in high school. Here comes that famous uh, best formation, best play in all of football. <laughs> Andre Washington gets to take the knee. And one more will do it here under the lights in Orangeburg. And the final home opener of the career of Coach Buddy Pugh. He's got a couple more home games, but a successful home opener for South Carolina State and these Bulldogs. Appreciate everybody across the ESPN Networks watching this one on the MEAC Digital Network. A lot of Citadel and South Carolina State alums tuning into this one. And there you see Coach Pugh coming out. We're going to see his former pupil, Coach Maurice Drayton. Will no doubt be a strong embrace there at midfield between those two guys. A lot of respect between them. There you go. And a smile for Coach Drayton. 
A lot of respect. Love to see that. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Coach Peters is telling you, keep your head up, keep working mm -hmm. at it. You know, I understand. Just keep working. Probably emotional there for Coach Pugh as well. See a guy like that that was coaching under him having success, and now he's standing across the way from him. So 31 to 10, South Carolina State defeats the Citadel. We'll take a look at some of the highlights in our player of the game, Corey Fields.